Hey guys, what's up? Inksmith back again, and today we're jumping right back into the creep show art stuff with one other aspect that we haven't touched on before. And maybe it's only me who's been kind of going over this again and again in their head, but the one part about it that bothers me the most is the fact that Anthony remains silent. A guy who Emily apparently dated for only a couple months and then Creepshow Art married and became her husband. Um, what do we know about this guy so far? Well, what we know is that he had his own YouTube channel for a while. Um, we know that he then changed the name, deleted all the stuff that he had off of there, um, shut down the website so that there's no comments or anything on there. Um, he also went to his Instagram as well and did the same thing. And he's kind of disappeared into the darkness. Isn't that odd? Because if you really think about it, aside from the lolcow outing creep show for what she's done, the really main linchpin that pulls this whole bit of drama together is Anthony. And I think we really need to take a look at the psyche of this guy and how he's not only been an integral part of a lot of what's gone down, but also the fact of the psychopathy involved with what he's done. So this is a guy who dated Emily only for a couple months. And from what it seems like from my perspective as a white, cisgendered male who's, you know, straight and dates, you know, women, is now married, um, I can totally see this guy playing out his sort of relationship and what he's done afterwards and now that he's married as kind of a protection for himself and also to push any anger off from himself that he may be facing any kind of judgment from his wife who is creep show. Um, you know, maybe I'm getting too personal with this, but I mean, he kind of got too personal with the stuff that he was doing to Emily. So I really don't feel overly bad about tearing this guy down. Um, this guy's kind of been the creep in the whole creep show art. Um, I think a lot of the stuff Shannon's done has been secretly been on puppet sp strings that have been connected to Anthony's hands. He's been the controller. He's been the puppet master behind this whole thing that's gone down. And why? Why would he go to such a length of trouble to attack Emily through all of this and continue to do so? Well, I think he's the one who kind of got the whole thing to launch and Shannon's been running with it for a while. But why? What is his motivation? Why has he done this? Now, everything I'm going to say is alleged. Everything I'm going to say is my opinion. I don't have a ton of stuff to back this up. I'm just saying it from the personal POV of a guy, a straight white cis guy, the same as Anthony, okay? You're looking at a guy who was deep into the whole art scene. You know, he was living that sort of roguish life, that bohemian artistic life, and dating art girls. Obviously, he married one of them even. Um, and this can kind of be chaotic when we art people date other art people. Uh, a lot of chaos can unfold. I'm not saying it's always a bad thing. Um, you know, one person can be the more stable aspect, but sometimes we tend to deal with a lot of drama. Um, and there's a lot of like infighting within our little communities and scenes. I think it's just because we're driven a lot by emotion and less by rationality. And I say that for myself too. Um, you know, I'm not putting myself outside of that. I'm saying it from someone who grew up within an art community of both high school and college and even career wise as well. I've seen it again and again and again. Um, I think what happened is if you remember the allegations, it was that Anthony climbed through Emily's window to commit essay, and I, I can't say the word or I'll get my complete video taken down or blocked on YouTube or age restricted, to commit essay to Emily why she was in an inebriated state, okay? 
So he takes advantage of her and she lashes out because of this, rightfully so. She had every right to do so. I mean, she was, you know, some someone in a very dire state at the time and should not have been taken advantage of. And then he comes crawling back home to Creepshow Art, who he is actually dating at the same time. Uh, maybe she finds out about his whereabouts or she finds out what he's done. And now he's flipped the story. Because if you look into some of the archives on Creepshow Art stuff, she claims that number one, Emily was not inebriated, which Emily herself even said, yeah, surprise, surprise, I lied. I was, you know, in a drug-induced state. Um, addicts tend to lie, tend to relapse. It's exactly what I said in my old video. I said, you know, Shannon says that after 2012, Emily was completely sober and not dealing with drugs anymore. And Anthony wouldn't associate with anybody doing drugs. I find that very hard to believe. Um, if he associated with her, Back when they dated for three months or however long it was, they just said it was months, only months. That's the exact same time that puts her in the time frame of being addicted or a substance abuser. So he was dating someone who was in that scene. So I don't understand why she says he would have never messed with anybody who's in that sort of situation, culture, or, you know, inebriation. He he did. He he dated her while she was in the midst of her use of drugs. So I, I don't get it. Like, why are you saying, oh, yeah, but then later he said he would never associate with someone like that. Yeah, I bet you that's the story he told you. I would bet that the reason Shannon says now that Emily was the aggressor, and that's her story. If you guys go back and read it and look this stuff up, she says that Emily cornered Anthony and took advantage of him. Now, I want you to think about this. I've heard Emily talk about how tiny she is before. She's a five foot two, like probably, you know, hundred and nothing person at that point, weight wise. And a dude much bigger than her is who she took advantage of. Really? That's what we're going with here. Okay. Um, that sounds like something a guy who would want to try and sweep under the rug in a fair he had would say. That sounds like something a guy who was lying to a spouse he didn't want to go into a full rage would say. And I've seen my own white cis male gendered friends say such things to get themselves out of a lot of trouble. Um, and it's not even just white guys. I've seen guys of all races, you know, cheat and do this. Um, I, The story I just told recently with the one guy who got – deported from Japan was doing this all the time to his wife, which I found completely disgusting. Um, if there's one thing I prize above all else, it's my wife and my family and the, I, I don't know how to even describe, I don't have a, it's ineffable, the kind of calmness they bring to my life that makes me way more stable than I ever was as a single guy. And I do not take that for granted at all. But this is something obviously Anthony did take for granted. Um, and I mean, you're also dealing with a guy who wasn't actually a family man. I mean, yeah, he had just been married and he was living in a car with her, but this doesn't stop him from having affairs. Now, if a guy were to have an affair with another woman and come back, get found out by his wife at the time, what's the first thing he's gonna probably do? Well, he's already a liar and a cheater, so of course he's gonna lie to that person. And what lie could he come up with? Oh, you don't like her, right? You don't like that girl, that girl Emily? Well, let me tell you the story about how she did SA to me. That makes you angry, doesn't it? That, in fact, makes you so angry, you're not angry at me anymore. Now you're angry at Emily. And that's kind of been the driving force behind this the whole time. Anthony came back and he claimed after he took advantage of Emily, he flipped the story completely and made it sound like Emily took advantage of him. I, you know, <laughs> I almost want to say logistically it would be impossible. A girl who's five foot two and drugged up on heroin, as she said at the time, uh, she was the one who was ultra aggressive. I mean, this just doesn't play out right in my mind, even if I try to write a imaginary story about it. It just doesn't work, okay? And now, ever since then, Ever since that one linchpin that connected Emily and Shannon, Anthony, 
there's been this vengeance, this absolute uncontainable rage and stalking that's been done by Shannon. And when it really starts to get ultra aggressive is around the time that you see this all stuff starting to happen. I think before there was a lot of jealousy. I think she was jealous of the fact that probably Emily had dated a guy she wanted to date and eventually marry. I think she might have been jealous of the fact that she had other aspects of her life, like an art career, a YouTube channel. She had her anime channel even back then. Um, and I mean, think about this. She not only had that anime channel back then, it was under a thousand subscribers. And after this affair apparently went down, and I, when I say affair, I only mean that for Anthony. I mean, Emily wasn't a married at the time. She was a single woman who was completely in a vulnerable situation that Anthony took advantage of. Um, and also this other thing about, well, she couldn't have possibly crawled through her window and done this to her because she was living with her dad. I don't know about you guys, but when I was a teenager in high school, uh, I met some of my girlfriends doing that. I hung out with them. Their parents just never came into the room. They left their window open. I crawled in. Um, you know, obviously I wasn't there to take advantage of them in a drug induced state. We probably just sat there and watched TV shows, but that was an easy way to get in and we were never detected by their parents. So I, I don't understand how that makes it impossible for him to sneak in, especially when she's in a state of like, you know, barely being conscious. Like, how does that stop him from sneaking in the window, even if she did live with her dad at the time? Let's give Shannon the benefit of the doubt and say that Emily really was living there at the time. I mean, as I'm seeing this, this is the full play out of how I'm seeing it. And, you know, like I said, this is a complete opinion. I don't have anything to back this up. Um, you know, Anthony's taken everything possible offline, and I think this is why. He crawled into her window, okay? He sent her a bunch of messages, crawled into her window, maybe he called her, and he could hear already just from her state or from her messages that she was inebriated, okay? Anybody can tell that when you're in an inebriated state to that point where you're barely conscious, like Emily said. And so he thought, oh, now's my chance, you know? I'm going to sneak in there and be a, a scoundrel, a horrible person. Um, an abuser okay and that's what he did he crawled in there he did that all right he did his horrible deed he crawled back out he got back home maybe Shannon didn't find out right away but something alerted her to the fact that she didn't know where Anthony was one night well maybe and this could be Emily who alerted her to it or it could be uh, another friend who alerted her to it or maybe Anthony somehow gave himself away but she found out that's where Anthony was that night now, of course, right away, she wonders, what exactly went down? Why would you be sneaking into this other girl's window who used to be your ex-girlfriend? Oh, I mean, nothing, you know? I just wanted to make sure she was okay. Now, Shannon's not a complete and utter moron. I mean, aside from what her 2.5-hour video might make you think, she knows guys, you know, are more aggressive when it comes to, you know, who takes their turn as far as... Uh, in advance, an intimate advance, if you will. This is the, the nicest way I can put it, and I'm sorry if I'm stepping on any toes by putting it this way. And so, you know, she knows he's not there to write her a get well soon letter, all right? She's not that dumb. And she knows what went down. She accuses him, and he says, no, 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 no. That's not what happened. Let me tell you what happened. And he makes up this big story about he was taken advantage of, uh, you know, maybe, maybe he did use the fact that she was drugged up as... Uh, fuel for the fire to try and convince her of this allegation, which, I mean, anybody who has any experience with any sort of inebriated state knows this isn't true. But maybe he said, yeah, she was uh, all messed up on drugs. She took advantage of me. I was just trying to escape and make sure I was okay. But, uh, you know, Emily took advantage of me at that moment. And uh, that finally got Shannon off his case. Unfortunately, this also... I guess, snapped a switch in Shannon that made her go full psycho mode and start stalking Emily for the next however many years afterwards. Now that everything's starting to fall apart, now that his framework of the story he put together is starting to fall apart, now that he's been called out for all of this, now he wants to go into hiding. Because he knows if we ever do get to the bottom of all of this, if we really do find out, it already looks bad. And probably if we clear away all the smoke and mirrors 
and get to the origin of the story, that's what it's going to be. There was really a night, like Emily says, where he crawled in through her window and took advantage of her. And ever since then, Shannon's been driven crazy with jealousy, stalking, hunting her down, trying to make her life as bad as possible for revenge to vindicate her wonderful, innocent, pure, uh, abused Anthony, you know, the man who can't speak up for himself, who refuses to make any sort of statement on any of this. When he has to leave it this unclear where the only person doing all his quote unquote dirty work is Shannon, I think he's got a lot to hide, okay? I've known other dudes who've cheated. It's not cool, I'm not down with it, and actually I don't kind of keep those kind of friends in my life. If someone is not you know, treating the girl right, especially now that I'm a married man and I, you know, have other friends in my life who are married. If they started to tell me about all these scandals and stuff they were going through, I would cut them off because I would feel like this dude is unstable or this dude does not appreciate what he has. You know, if you really didn't want to stay with Shannon, he should have just ended it and tried to get back with Emily the proper way. A scumbag like Anthony didn't do that. He took advantage of a really shady situation and now he's desperate to hide it so desperate in fact that he's letting someone completely else pull the strings uh, try to make these videos to defend him uh, try to come up with all kinds of fake evidence what he probably doesn't understand at this point is that everything's fallen apart you know all of her lies all of her quote-unquote defense just kind of makes her look like a psychopath and makes anthony look like he's hiding something even darker than shannon and if I were to guess, what it was that he's trying to hide is the fact that he started this all off to begin with. Now guys, like I said, again, I wanna keep reinforcing this. I don't have anything to back this up. This is pure opinion. This is looking at from a guy who's had other guy friends and guys who've done this, all right? And this is the only conclusion I can come to, why he will not make a statement, why he's staying so far back. And I'll bet you, He's going to eventually have everything completely deleted from the internet in general. He's going to try and make sure he rips every little scrap of anything he's ever done. And eventually, when he realizes Shannon's little shade didn't work at all, his uh, wife's shady video that made her look more like a stalker than anything Emily could have done, uh, he probably is eventually going to convince her to take it down too and just be like, it's okay, everybody's just so mean to my perfect Shannon. Don't listen to him, Shannon. You're the best. I would never do anything to hurt you. Because he doesn't want to be in the doghouse, all right? Maybe he's stuck in an unhappy relationship. Maybe he's stuck in a situation where he has to stay with Shannon. Maybe he really does care about her now and wants to keep it going. But if she ever finds out that something like this really did happen and she stops being convinced of the, own, the story Anthony and her made up in their mind, uh, things are going to go south real quick. I can tell you that. So that's why this whole ruse is being kept. This is why uh, he's withdrawing. She's lashing out and eventually, I think, going to completely disappear from the Internet. If she ever does come back, it would be really interesting. When Emily finally makes a statement, I think it's going to be even more interesting. Of course, if she makes a statement and it doesn't seem to match up to anything I'm saying now, I'll more than happily take this video down. If Anthony comes out and says something like, hey, what this guy's saying is totally messed up. There's no way. Let me show you all this great evidence. And he comes out and does that, I'll take this video down. If Shannon comes out and does that, I'll take this video down. But for now, that's what it's looking like from my POV. As another white cisgender dude, this is what it's looking like, okay? Some scumbag friend that I would have had back in like... I don't know, college when I had frat boy friends who would do stuff like this all the time. That's pretty much what Anthony's looking like. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'd love to hear it. Until next time, I've been the Inksmith. I hope you have a great rest of the day. Before the video ends, I want to give a shout out to all my new patrons. I'm absolutely amazed I have patrons already, even though I just recently started it back up for both channels. Tom at my first tier, thank you so much. Nas at the next level, and amazingly, Fluffy Panda's World at top level, donating over $100 a month. Guys, I 
that blows my mind and I want to say thank you so much. Anyone and everyone can donate to the Patreon if you want to. Of course, you just being a viewer and subscriber is payment enough. If you would like to receive free artwork or even commission me to do something, the patron does in case that and you can call on me to be your personal artist at any time if you are a patron at, I believe, the third or fourth level. Until next time, I have been Inksmith and I will talk to you again real soon.